our top reasons why we know and confident that this is the Texan Super Bowl run. Let's talk about it. Oh, yeah. We back in this thing, man. You joining us on the Bull Run podcast. And, uh, yeah, the Bull the bull Run podcast, Omar, the Bull Run. The Bull is Run. All, the Bull Run is all about the Texans, the Houston Texans Bull Run, baby. When you think about a Bull Run, what, what do you think about, Omar? I mean, we, just – the running of the bulls is the is the big one, right? That, that's what I mean. That that's what comes to mind to me, right? Is it's the bull running wild in the city, in the streets of Spain, let's go, and just knocking over anybody and anything that is in front of it. That's get what the I hell think. Out the way. You get the hell out the <laughs> way right now. You in my way? You're trying to get that's this right. chip, baby. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that's what this is all about, man. We are documenting and putting out our ideas and our. We're speaking it into existence that this is the Houston Texans Super Bowl winning season. What else do you think about when you think about bull run, bro? You know, you hear you hear bull run, especially y'all during like the pandemic and stuff, man. Every YouTube was talking, you know, talking about the bull run. You know, yeah, you think about the bull run. You think about you think about the money, bro. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that that's that is the time when everybody is making money and 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 prosperity and and everything is going up in value, right? Oh, Just like baby. every single Houston Texans pick that has happened over the last three or four years, all of them are going up in value. Everything, right? baby. Tank it's Dell's value wild. is up. Way up. Collins's value is up. All let's the not way even up. let's not even mention our quarterback. His value is absolutely through the roof, right? Nobody knew who CJ Stroud was. Come on. At the beginning of the season. And now his value is way up, has talked, has taken a huge bull run. Yeah. Right. Babe. And and just the, the franchise as a whole, right? It's it's a big bull run on the value of the Houston Texans. We are Dude. media darlings now. Last year, nobody cared about us. Nobody Everybody was speaking us to, to, to be in the first position again to, to exactly. grab one of these uh these picks, you know, exactly. being one of the worst teams in the league, if not the worst team, but everybody was coming us out. Nobody think that Houston Texans were gonna exactly. be in a position to be talked about the way we are right now, man. Exactly. So that's why that's why we're here. That's why this podcast, the solely why this podcast exists right now. Uh, and, and specifically this episode, man. I know we we've done a couple of episodes with y'all already. Uh, we've talked about a few couple of different topics, uh, but today we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of why we're here, why me and Omar are, are really rocking with this podcast, man, and, and talking to you guys, and extremely confident in the Texans Super Bowl run. All right, it's a bull run. Our stock is way way up, way man, up. and this team. This team is about to about to do the damn thing, man. Um, before we get into all of that, like I say, if you've been rocking with us for the last couple of episodes that we put out, look, man, we love you, we appreciate it. But what I need y'all to do, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, all right? Yep. Just like the Texans got hefty goals for this year, we got some hefty goals, all right? Pretty we hefty. Trying to, we trying to get to we trying to get to a thousand subscribers before the season starts, all right? So look, Ooh, that'd be not good. A, it's not a it's not a major goal, guys. Come on, all you gotta no, do is hit not. the goddamn button. That's it. That's push, it. What up, what what old girl say on a rush hour? Push the goddamn button. Push the goddamn button. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It don't cost you nothing. You know, you get to you get to rock with us, man. You get to see some really good topics that we got going on. And look, you can go anywhere for your Houston Texans news, but I guarantee you, this is gonna be the most entertaining channel that you're tuning sure. into. All right, all right. Yep. Let's so that it. being said, man, now that you didn't hit that button, Omar, let's talk about why we so damn confident that we that we getting it done this year. This is the window. I think it's gonna get done this year, but this is definitely when we when when you talk about a window in sports, you know, it's football specifically, right? Mm -hmm. Um, there's there's factors that they go into it, man. This is a true team sport, and basketball sometimes, man, I think. You you can you can have a superstar guy that has an amazing year and that guy can carry them to a chip. Yeah. Football, man, you know, this is this is 11 on 11, baby. You know, it has to be unified. It has mm -hmm. a lot of different things has to happen on the field, in front office, a little bit of luck. You know, right. a lot of different things got to happen, man. So we're going to talk about in this episode what 
those things are that we've seen in particular that lets us know this is absolutely the window and we have what it takes. We're in that time. We're in that window, that two, sure. three year time frame. Uh, I think it's going to get done this year, though, bro. I I, I'm, I'm with you. I, I just so I'll, I'll I'll kick it off. Right. I'll, I'll kick it off with my I have a couple of things here. Right. And, and, and this is this isn't we don't script this right between you and I. So we're just going to th- we're going to toss some things around and i might have some things that you have and you might have some things that i have yeah for sure number one thing that i that i always look at right is especially when quarterbacks rookie quarterbacks have these explosive rookie seasons right it's always it it always catches people off guard and that's one of the reasons why they end up having such a great season there's no tape on them right other than the college tape but we all know college and professional football completely different things right yeah NFL, no. college totally don't always translate game. that doesn't yeah. always yeah, exactly doesn't always translate i mean there's there's a slew of guys that were absolute kings uh in college that came to the uh came to the pros and, and just absolutely couldn't couldn't make sense of the game right yeah you hear a lot of people talk about how fast marcus russell much, well there's a bunch of them and, uh, <laughs> out, out the Austin, Texas ones too but i don't want to i don't want to make people mad but you hear a lot about <laughs> how like the the game is so much faster and 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 all this other stuff and and so they don't always translate however yeah. CJ Stroud in his rookie campaign was just head and shoulders above every other rookie quarterback yes. that has maybe happened in the last two or three seasons but there's always this idea of okay sophomore season sophomore is slump. always a slump right? They they talk about it all the time, the sophomore slump, right? And so one of the things that people always tell me about being delusional about this season and and my expectations of what this season is going to be, and I always get get told that I'm being delusional, is because of that sophomore slump, right? They're saying, oh no, CJ is going to have a sophomore slump. So because of that sophomore slump, there's no way that the Texans are going to have the type of bull run that you think they're going to have, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I'm saying all of that as a negative, right? As a reason why it's not going to happen. But I'll tell you the number one reason why I think despite CJ's sophomore season, we're going to have a pretty, uh, a pretty good run at the Super Bowl this year. And that, that has largely in part to do with the fact that this team is not the same team that they were last season. Right. I mean, typically from one season to the next, from a rookie quarterbacks, rookie season to the very next season, you don't usually see such a change in personnel and such an upgrade in personnel. Essentially, CJ did, he made a a, a 15 course meal out of chicken shit, right? Yeah. He, he, he had relatively unknown guys. He had all of this unknown talent. And now this season, with all of the massive upgrades that the front office has done, this is not the same team. Yeah. So, they're not. I don't think that they're going to go in with the same game plan that they had last year, which is probably what now teams have tape on, right? They yeah. have tape on last year Texans and last year CJ. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be the same this year. I think, I think we're going to go out and play a completely different brand of football this year with all of these personnel additions. Mixon is going to be a completely different thing to see than what we were seeing last year at the running back position. I agree. Not even mention Diggs. Not even to mention like all of these guys that we're bringing in that are going to completely change the dynamic of how we're going to run plays this year, right? Yeah. We still yeah. and then we still have um what's our OC's name? I I, I keep I was Slowick. His, uh, Slowick, yeah. It, 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 we got him back. So now he is fully aware of the capabilities of what CJ can do. And then now he has all these new things that are, that are like, you know, all these new toys that he gets to play with. It's it's Uh, like, you actually, you, you actually took my, my number one uh, reason that, that, you know, this is spoiler alert. Uh, you know, uh, (laughs) that that's actually my number one reason uh, for for feeling so confident. Bobby Slug was supposed to be gone, Omar. Yes, he was. He was he, supposed to get a. Uh, and it, listen, it's a damn shame he didn't a head get a coach. Head, head coach job. Exactly. Yeah. So we got lucky in that sense. This you, is a you, that's a head coach caliber guy 100%, 100%. that we retained. All right. Uh, he's a football savant. 
he came from the your pro football focus. But this guy can dissect game field like none other. Draws up these plays. He's from the the Kyle Shanahan tree. Exactly. All of this, all of the stuff that we know. But him to not have gotten a head coaching job is, in my opinion, the number one reason why we're about to take this thing, run with it, run to the Super Bowl. Because, like you alluded to, you know what you were saying. CJ is not a joke. No, CJ is the real deal you don't go out there and make all of the moves that this team has made if you don't believe that you have a guy at quarterback all right i agree there's there's been there's been there's been super bowl teams that's made a run uh on a quarterback friendly friendly contract meaning for for people that don't understand what i'm saying when you got a rookie quarterback you're paying them significantly less than you are the studs uh, right. in the NFL once they get to their second contract and some of the highest paid quarterbacks, because that's the most important position uh, on the field. Uh, when you got a quarterback in their rookie contract, it's a much, much friendlier deal for the team. Right. And with it being the most important position and you got that guy, uh, that's rare, Omar. I mean, I cannot think, rare. I can't think of a team in a situation like ours. Now you, you had Russell Wilson some years back, right. Mm-hmm. Who, Mm-hmm. He inherited a team. Yes, you know his team was Super Bowl caliber already, right? They had the Legion of Boom. Their defense was amazing, and he inherited a great team. CJ came into a shit show, exactly, and he he's making the team good. Right. So they've gone out and they put a team around him. What would you rather have, right? You 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 much rather you know kind of kind of. You want that quarterback, man. You want you want that right. guy that's uh you know that's that's a really good quarterback. I, I I could see an argument for both, right? You know, you you have right. a really good team and insert somebody great, um, you know, good enough to do the job, kind of like a Brock Purdy. As I'm, I'm probably rough with some feathers by saying that. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but to your point though, I mean, like that there's there's a lot of there's a lot of uh examples of that, right? And and the other thing about it too is that you know, you 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 talk about CJ like coming into like a shit team um which that you know i i say that kind of tongue in cheek right but at the same time that cj got there like all of these young players got there as well right and so the beauty of what's going on right now in houston is that you know you there was a lot of firsts right and everybody knows you always remember your first right <laughs> um so th- th- there's a lot of firsts going on right with 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 D'Amico being a first time coach with uh, you know, um, CJ being a rookie quarterback with Tank Dell was also his rookie season. I believe it was yeah. Colin's rookie season as well, right? No, no, no. No, uh, Col- Colin's was, second. I think it was the second year. Yeah, second or third. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. But they're, they're, like, my point is, is that they're, they're, there's like a really, like all these guys are relatively new to. to they're young, to, baby. Yeah, they're young. They're young, right? Yeah. So we got a lot. There's a lot of development there that can that can still happen. And to your point about, you know, having these young we we have our guy our our number one captain of the of the boat yeah under a rookie contract and we find out that he is this amazing talent now is the time to go grab all of these these superstars right a la la mixed in right and it's not a fluke right i know you know you started off by saying um the possibility of a sophomore slump Right. Mm-hmm. The, the reason why you go out and you make the moves that, that you've done as the Texas organization is because, man, you've seen what CJ can do. Right. You've seen him put together an entire season, not just a couple games that was like, oh, man, he yeah. put together, you know, a couple 300 yard games. He uh. has the potential. He has the potential to be. No, he uh, showed his ass. Did it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. he showed his ass. And so we know what he's capable of. Right. We know that he's a stud, man. He yeah. talk about a football savant, man. You know, that damn stupid ass test that he that took test, didn't yeah. mean nothing. Hey, yeah, listen, he, God bless that test. God I, bless. I, I for one, I for one love it, right? Because exactly. you know, it's like it it allowed him to to put like this little bit of information out there that that uh ultimately had him land in, in our lap, right? And and because exactly. it's not you know, if he would have, imagine if he would have aced that test. Right? Yeah, yeah, we would have lo- we looked a lot more attractive to the Carolina Panthers, man. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, how sick would we be feeling right now? Oh, we'd be we so upset. Shorty. We had a little shorty under the 
<laughs> so, so, so look at so this. One of the things I like to do, especially after a game or after, you know, after a few games, I did it a lot, especially this year, especially during, you know, really big games that CJ had, is to go on the Panthers subreddit. Ah. Right? And, and, <laughs> you are a hater, oh bro. My God. Oh my God, dude. The, the, the subreddits are so. So hilarious. Uh, I'm sure they sick to their stomachs. Oh, uh, just sick to their stomachs. And th that's like that's the beauty of it all, right? Like that's how you that's how you know, right? Like you know that you've got something special whenever yeah. the other teams are paying attention to the success that CJ's having and going, damn it, look what we could have had. Like, yeah. look what this could have been. Much in yeah. the same way that we right now are looking back at Deshaun Watson and going, <laughs> like, man, I'm glad we unloaded that hunk of crap. No, because you know? how many how many times have we been on the other side of that? Right, oh, like, it, look, it's, it, looking yeah. at a guy that we're like, damn, man, we could have we could have had that. Or why why couldn't we be in this position? Blah right. blah blah. Right. Uh, so yeah, it feels good to be on the other side exactly. of the coin uh, for a change, man. So so it looks like we we were on uh, we we're both in sync on that number one. Uh, the number one reason why we feel like it's just it's going to be our our year this year. Uh, kickoff number two. What's your what's your number two reason? Well, like I say, you uh, you, you, def you, you, you definitely kind of took mine with the with the slow thing. That was gonna be my number one reason, but I mean, Sue, let's talk about the free agent, not just free agent acquisitions, but but off season moves, uh, right? In, in in general, right? Um, like we alluded to at the top of the show, it's so many things that have to work in conjunction with building a super bowl quality team it's a team effort it's not just what's out there on the field right. but it's what's in the front office it's it's yes. even the ownership man yes and look we're talking about we're the houston texans omar we're yeah. no strangers to controversy when it comes right. to front office stuff uh and just terrible leadership how the hell did we get here bro it's such a small amount of time i mean are we did we go through a but time warp, bro. Mm -hmm. Like this is the alternate universe, man. We're we're literally sitting here talking in favor of Texas Texans front, front office, front office. And right? And Texans ownership, man. Right. Who doesn't love Kyle and Hannah McNair in this city right now, bro? Oh, for sure. I mean, they've just done a complete one eighty, turned this whole thing around. Jack Easterby is gone. Uh, D'Amico Ryan's is is. I mean, talk about JJ being mayor. If he, I mean, if you don't pick him for his running mate, bro, his running mate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these guys yeah, there, are beloved. There, there's a, there's a lot to be said there, right? Because I, you know, r r rest in peace to Papa McNair, right? I mean, obviously, you know, he he brought the squad back. He 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 brought he brought us back, and he brought he brought football back to Houston, right? Absolutely. And so yeah. for, for that, the city will forever be indebted to that man. Now, uh, I personally feel like he was like a little too involved, a la uh, you know the guys over in Dallas uh, with uh, with Jerry yeah, Jones, yeah, 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 who wants to be the owner and the GM, and he you don't clearly if you don't want your label dancing in your videos, you come over to <laughs> yeah, come over to, yeah, come over to death row. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but you see what i'm saying though it's like no but i think you know i think with the passing of the torch obviously um and again all all respect to the to the mcnair family and the passing of of, of a big papa mcnair but you know i i call him baby huey I mean, <laughs> that's just what i like to go affectionately and respectfully i call him baby huey For sure. um just because you know i think i think he's really taken like an, an uh, a hands-off approach in in the sense that like okay i i i, I kind of don't want to deal like i i want to deal with like the the cool parts of being an owner like i don't want yeah. i want to hire people who are you know i i like his style of management more than his dad's right because at yeah. this point he said you know what i'm i'm going to i'm going to listen to to key people in the organization and talk about what's working what's not working okay let's get rid of the things that aren't working let's yeah. bring in some new blood yeah and some and some new you know some new ideas and some new uh, you know some new strategies and let's try them out and see what happens and it just so happens that the one thing that they did stuck right yeah um that's you great leadership getting, get, that's yes that's great called. leadership you, you mentioned getting rid mean. of easterby right like yeah. that every i think every houston texans fan over the last three or four years could have told you that that guy was an absolute an absolute cancer, right, bro? And as a as a as a football fan base, you're not supposed to know the damn people's name 
inside the organization as a, as, a, as a household name. You're not exactly. supposed to be running around your house about damn Jack used to be. Yeah, damn Jack used to be. <laughs> yeah, for That's sure. That's insane. If you're right, gonna complain right, about right. something, complain about the guys on the field. But but right. for it to be known that Jack used right. to be as a cancer and contributed to to the team being unsuccessful was was nuts. Yeah, and, and we and we we had a we had a reputation. I mean, Texas has a reputation no matter what of being like a type type of like culture of like the good old boy networks right and and like oh i'll give my buddy a job even though he might not be like the best person for the job oh yeah he, he's gonna get the job because i own the place and that's my boy and i don't care if he runs the place into the ground or not you know whatever yeah. uh but you know and so we, we we sometimes carry some of that blind loyalty uh just as our culture right like as yeah. as like a, a a way of like taking care of our own kind of thing and sure. so I think that there was a lot of that going on with with uh, uh, with you know with the previous leadership, and I think that's something that um, that you know that that's just gone away now. Uh, there's a little bit of like meritocracy that has kind of stepped in, where it's like, all right, you guys are gonna we're we're gonna go off of what you've done, what you can do, your accomplishments, and things like that. And so far, it's worked out really great. And that front office change is kind of what sparked everything else, right? It's like. Yeah, it's the front office that decided to bring in a D'Amico. It's you know, it's and and that's been the catalyst for everything, in my opinion. Yeah, they they knew he was going to be a stud, man. You know, yeah. we've uh, after uh, Bill O'Brien, you know, they brought in guys just on single year deals, right? right? Like you knew they were just placeholders. The right. David Cullies of the world, the the uh, the Lovey Smith, Lovey uh, Smith, yeah, God, <laughs> God bless Lovey Smith, man. I know. Screw y'all. Yeah, yeah. We win, oh, baby. Y'all want me to lose and, uh, this game? Nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. The single, that is the single is. pivotal moment. If, oh, bro. If we could turn back to one one thing, bro. Yes. That moment where he decided, what is he decided to go for two, right, or something like that? He went. So he went for no, it on fourth. Oh, fourth he went for it on fourth and twenty. He right. went for it on fourth and twenty in a game where it's like, dude, lose. If you lose the game, you you you're being handed an L. On right. a silver platter, all you have right. to do is like not go for it on a fourth and twenty, or don't convert. But right. it's like, nope, right. go for it. Nope. Then after converting it, then he goes for two, then he goes and wins two. the game. <laughs> 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 so if it wasn't enough of a giant middle finger saying, "Hey, this is this is what I'm doing," going for yeah. two definitely solidified the fact that, nah, bro, I yeah. can give a damn about this number one pick. Uh, I'm out of here anyway. I'm trying to catch this win, so. There's yeah. a there's a quote from one of my favorite movies, which is Moneyball. I don't know if you've seen Moneyball before. Oh yeah, where the guy goes uh, when he was talking to the to the uh, to the coach, and he goes, uh, he's like, "Hey man, I told you don't don't play that guy. You need to play hit this other guy." And he's like, "Look, yeah. I'm fielding a team in a way that I can explain in interviews next year." Yeah. Right. That's exactly what. Yeah. Like, what like, hey, to hell with what you got going on. I'm not gonna be here next year, so. I'm gonna make my plays, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I need to do in a way that I can explain in interviews next year when I'm going out for for some of these OC and DC positions. Maybe you're right. another coaching position. Like yeah. I I have to look out for myself in this case and and make some sound decisions because in interviews saying oh they told me to tank is not gonna be the type of response that's gonna be beneficial for my career going forward. Hey, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. So shout and out to the decision. Saya, shout out to Lovey, man. But yeah, <laughs> we we had those guys when they brought in D'Amico, bro, they signed him to an extended contract right off right off, off the, bat. the bat. You know, yeah. there ain't gonna be no controversy, there ain't gonna be no, you know, oh man, you know, if you have a bad year, which would to be that would be expected as a right. first year rookie head coach with a first year rookie quarterback, quarterback. first yeah. year rookie OC yeah. nobody's expecting you to do much but hey yeah bobby was the first that. year uh, rookie of the year yeah. as an OC last year yeah, that, yeah. i mean you said it, I mean, everybody this whole organization bro yeah. in its infancy bro a, a toddler with a gun bro just just running yeah. around <laughs> shooting the shots bro and and just making it happen baby yeah. uh so Tell I mean, it just it. just awesome, dude. So yeah. they give D'Amico the contract. Say, hey, you know what? Here's a little bit of a leash. You know, right. you're gonna have your growing pains, but you're our guy. You right. know, that's just D'Amico Ryan's man. Right. You know, he's and how how much the, how much did that help, bro? He's the he's the straw that stirs the drink. Yeah, you know, he's a culture guy. 
right. you know what I'm saying? Right. You don't you don't do that unless you know, like, hey, we want to establish our culture around around this guy. Uh, I mean, that's one of the main contributors to the the success and why we Super Bowl bound, baby. Uh, that's right. Absolutely, man. So I, I'll give you another one. Okay. Um. So we, you know, a lot, a lot of the, you know, the, the the main things that we've talked about here about why, like, what is it that the Texans have done that make us feel like that this is going to be our run, right? But the other thing that I'll bring up is just the fact of the matter is that if there has ever, if there has ever been a bet that you want to make, I don't, I'm not a betting man, you know me, I, I'm not a betting man. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 uh, I was gonna say something that was probably gonna get me canceled. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was gonna say if, if you didn't know your nationality, you would think that you were a, a different nationality. Okay, than right. actually are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, listen, man, you're tight with money, it. boy. Yo, you yeah. don't play with that. Nah, yeah, I don't. I don't. Well, it's not that I'm tight with money. I'll spend my money on some dumb shit. But one thing yeah. I don't do is gamble. Um, but if I if I had if I had to place a bet. I would say that the Houston Texans are absolutely winning the division this year. And the reason why I can say that easy, is because our division money. is so weak, right? Easy money. And so so what that allows us is, is home field advantage, right? Going into the playoffs. And we win our division. We get a bye week, right? No, no, no. Okay. Yes. Right? No, if, if we win the conference. If we win the conference, we, we get the we win week. a division, we get home field we advantage. We get home field advantage. Uh, okay, so. to host, the, yeah. Exactly. So right off the bat, we, we're winning the division because our division is trash. So my, my number two reason why I think that we're going to make this run is because the, the our playoff, we're, we're obviously playoff bound. There's I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Yeah. Number two, we're going to win the division, giving us a home field advantage. And I'll have to go back and look, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, no, this is because we'd have to go through in order to win the division. In order to, to to win the conference, we'd have to go through. Um, uh, let me see. We who else do we have to go through? Oh yeah, we'd have to who go had? through. We'd have yeah, we'd have to go through Kansas City Chiefs. We'd have to go through. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got we got we got I some mean, people maybe, that we definitely gotta gotta go through, man. But it, the <clears throat> the hierarchy are the rankings so far that have come out during this. Uh, this this piece preseason or you know before the season has started ahead of those guys well they have they only have the kansas city chiefs and most of them um the baltimore Ravens have us ahead of baltimore um uh, yeah some of them do but most of them were third in the rankings right behind kansas city and baltimore so um those are going to be the major players you know we we, we all feel like the bills hmm did I lose you? I think I lost you, buddy. Uh, but I mean, so so far, it's just it's just a couple a couple teams ahead of us in the rankings. Uh, so far, yeah, and that's and so that's my uh, that's so yeah. Of, I mean, we definitely got to go through the top dogs to win right. the conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's just it's it's an easy path. It it almost looks like like an easy simple path to at least get to the playoffs and have a good positioning in the playoffs where we got home field advantage with the potential, depending on how Kansas City does. Now, there's a lot of film out there on Kansas City. There's a lot of film out there on Baltimore, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, teams might be playing them. Obviously, whenever you play the champs, whenever you play the division, the the conference champs, that that – tends to bring out everybody's a game right and so um you know there, there is a possibility where we could potentially win the conference right and then end up Absolutely. with home field advantage and a first week by um you know and that's just because the other teams are especially in our division uh just trash i don't yeah I don't them. disagree. I don't know I'm I don't dis I don't disagree with you at all I think you're a hundred percent correct I think it's a given that that you know I don't I don't want to you know sound too boastful mm. and you, you know I think oh man we got it in the bag but hey like you say if you're a betting man if you're gonna put right. your money on on somebody to win this division it's gonna be the Houston Texans so with right. that Omar look bro we haven't always been the studs that we're talking about this team being <laughs> right but we've never lost a playoff game 
That's true. Uh, 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 you know, in the first round, obviously, right. we've lost, we've right. lost play- playoff games. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, but um, we we haven't lost in the first round, right? And, and most of that is contributed to the fact on just what you're saying. You, we we've won the division, got that. We host a playoff game, we handle our business. Home field home. advantage. Yeah. So so you know what you're saying, and what a lot of people may not think about, man. There's 17 games now in the regular season. Used to be mm-hmm. 16 games. So right. these games are crucial, dude. Right. These games are, are worth its value and gold. Like you got to win these games. Every single week is important. And they're important because of just what you just said. You want to be able to have home field advantage all throughout the playoffs. Let's think about it. We're a Texas team. We're in Houston, Texas. The thing we complain about the most down here is traffic and the heat. You know, we right. we like our weather, right? So we we got to we we play in a dome, or you know, we can cover up our stuff. Point being, we don't want to play in the cold. We don't want to play right. in this inclement weather, right? So if we're going through these teams, like you just talked about, the Kansas City Chiefs of the world, the Baltimore Ravens, uh, they're in the cold. E- even the Bills, yeah, they playing out there in the cold, bro. Arrowhead's an outdoor win. stadium, right? Yeah, bro. Yeah, because it yeah. works to their advantage. You know, right. uh, Foxborough was somewhere you never wanted to go during Brady's run. You know, yeah, they out there open air in the snow. Yeah, he tucking it and all this craziness. Uh, so <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, yeah, you MNT, wanna, yeah, wanna... MNT Bank Stadium. That's also outdoors. As Outdoor, well. yeah. In Baltimore. yeah, of Ooh, course, man. of course, bro. They gonna bro. The, the, they build these stadiums like that for a reason, right? For a reason. Yeah, you you, yeah. you want them, you want the teams to come to your place and have to play on your terms. Dude, what's diabolical? Oh, I don't know if you've seen what the damn Miami Dolphins do, but they do it in reverse, right? Like you you go up to the cold weather stadiums and you have to play outside in the weather. Right, right. Freaking Miami. Yeah. Bro, they they beam that damn sun on yeah. the opposing sideline so much so that Dog, it, it's it's making these these teams crazy. Yeah. They're they're going yeah. delusional on the sideline because they're so damn hot. Yeah, because because uh, the, the way they the way they oriented the stadium, right? Yes. It has to do, it's like yes, that freaking diabolical. That's man. diabolical. It is, it is, <laughs> it is. That's it's almost as diabolical as a, as a, as a dude going out there and making a detrimental about a certain rapper, bro. Like how do you, how do you come back from that? You you don't. <laughs> The, the, the Miami Dolphins got the BBL Drizzy of stadiums, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my it's, god! It's nuts, man. But yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that's that's all. That's all the points. I mean, it's like, how, how do we, like you said, not to be bragful or boastful, but I, but I, I mean, lock of the century, right? The Texans, barring any injuries, right? Yeah. I mean, the Texans are a lock for the AFC yeah. South. Man, just, yeah. I wonder what the I wonder what the betting line oh, is on that question. right now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because obviously you could go in and place prop bets already. I'm sure. I mean, it can't be anything giving up a lot of money, right? It, it'd probably be a situation where you put down a hundred for the Texans to win the division, probably just win by twenty bucks or so. I can't yeah. imagine it'd be anything. It's a plus eight fifty for the Texans to win the Damn. AFC. Okay, the AFC. The a oh shoot the the entire so expl- conference. So explain that to me because I'm not a I'm not a betting man. Plus eight fifty. That's not bad, right? That's like a really that's that's not a big underdog play. It's not. No, it's not at all. What are the what are Chiefs? So Chiefs are plus three seventy to win to win. And this is on I don't know what 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 platform that's on, but um. Yeah, and it goes up from there. Dolphins are a plus twelve hundred. Jets are plus fourteen hundred. But yeah, the Texans are plus eight fifty. Yeah, yeah. So um, what are they second behind the Chiefs? Uh, fourth, fifth behind the Bengals. Really? That's yeah. a, okay. That surprises me, man. Yeah, me that too. Surprises me. Yeah. Well, but it, but it's funny because on let me see what's this on MGM. They're above the Bengals. They're right behind the Bills, on both MGM and on on uh, DraftKings. Behind the Bills. Wow. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised by that. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised by that. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. And that's to win the entire conference. That's um, for the whole conference. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um. Yeah. But basically, kind of like what I was saying. You put down a hundred. 
Oh yeah, uh, you you get back uh eighty five, you know. But but uh, it seemed like the the Panthers, for example, what are they? They're probably okay, like so, so something stupid, like plus twenty thousand or, or yeah something. yeah yeah. So so here's the odds for the AFC South division plus one hundred five for the Texans across the board. Okay, yeah. So that that means you what you put down a hundred bucks to win five dollars. Is that how that works? I think so. I okay, want to say yeah. I want to say yeah. Because I mean, yeah, because we're the odds on favorite, right? What what would be like the Titans a plus a thousand? Yeah, the Titans are plus 800. Okay, yeah, so bet 100. Yeah, the, so the Titans are sorry, the Titans are plus 900. So you put down 100 to win 900. That's yeah, because yeah, because that's an underdog bet. Yeah, yeah, it's under. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, again, not far off from, from the division champs and not far, not far off. I mean, uh, for, for the conference from the, champs from and, the whole conference. And, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's wildly important for us to try to get, I mean, bro, we got to try to get a, get a buy home field advantage. I mean, a- anything that could work in our advantage, man, we gotta, we gotta try to run the table and, uh, you know, speaking of that. So guys, if you're joining us right now, make sure that you join us later on this week when we're going to talk about the, uh, the schedule release. Yes, it was sir. To come out last week. Uh, they pushed but it back. The, the, the NFL man, they know they got something, dude. They they're so captivating the entire year, even when the games aren't going on. That's right. This is the most popular sport in America, dude. <laughs> they're trying to take it global, man. I mean, it's 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 nuts. So um, they're gonna make a spectacle out of it, like like LeBron James decision type stuff, and. Uh, uh, we don't talk about that here, sir. That is the key <laughs> event that made me a LeBron James hater. You know this. That's why you said that. Uh, anyway. LeBron can do – well, I can't wait till Bronny do his decision, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> I want to be on live with you no, when he does no, it. With no, 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 Bronny's no. like, yeah, I'm taking my talents to L.A. <laughs> That's all right. The Pistons are – the Hawks are going to draft Bronny, and then LeBron's going to go over to Atlanta. And then he's gonna go down the same path that Dwight Howard went down. Oh man, down yeah. bottom, nah, power bottom. <laughs> <laughs> That's where LeBron's gonna get turned in Atlanta. He got prim- he got primed in L.A. He was cool when he was in Cleveland. Then he went down to Miami. He was a playboy, and then he got yeah. to L.A. And it's like, hey, we already know what happens over there. Let's go. So he's he's already primed, and now he's gonna get to Atlanta, and we already know what happens in Atlanta. Oh man, Sugar so. Bron, Sugar Bron. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh. You say no, no Diddy, no Diddy, baby. No diddy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, man, you want to get you, you, <laughs> so look in the same vein of talking about us knowing for sure, like being ultra confident that. We going to the Super Bowl for sure. It comes down to the schedule, man. So because we came out the gate swinging last year, above beyond expectation, now we got to go through some dogs to get to where we yes. want to go to, right? So we got the the division leading schedule. It's gonna be tough. We already know who our opponents are, right? Right. I don't know if you want to. I don't know if you want to pull yeah, that let me up. See, let's pull um, that up. But um, you know, we'll be able to look at it. So. All we need to know now is exactly how that schedule is, is going to shake out. So one thing that we absolutely know for certain without making a prediction, we can say for a fact, we are not going to have the opening Thursday night game. They've already announced that they're going to do uh, the conference rematch of the Chiefs versus the Ravens. So a lot of people predicted, man, because the Texans are like the media darlings this year, they might have the opening game possibly against the Chiefs or someone. Um, but that's not going to be the case. So we can rule that out. With that being the case, Omar, I would dare say we get in the we get in the first week dub. I think. Because so yeah, so we have Colts, Jaguars, Titans, Bills, Dolphins, Ravens, Bears, Lions, all at home, and then the Colts, Jaguars, Titans, Jets, Patriots, Chiefs, Packers, Vikings, Cowboys. Man, you think we're gonna get that Thanksgiving game with the Cowboys? I do. Yes, that was gonna be my so other too, prediction. Man. Yeah, but why, but somebody will have to drop the ball hard, hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to not put that game on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. And then, and then, what would be even what would be even crazier 
is if that game actually had some playoff implications. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like where we're actually yeah. fighting for something or, I mean, hopefully not. Hopefully we're that ahead in the division that it won't even matter. But like, I would love for yeah. the Cowboys to go into that game, like absolutely needing that win. Oh, of course. Yes. And just to crush all of their souls <laughs> would be, would be a dream. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we got this, we got this bromance that's going on between Michael Parsons and CJ, and CJ right now, right. which we're going to, we're going to do a full episode we're gonna, we're gonna on that. that we're going to do a full episode on that. So we're not going to get into all that, but of course, man, they, with they robbery, you, you know, one of them want to get the better uh, of each other on that one, man. So, um, man, so the reason why I say, I think it's a, it's a one, it's a, a, a week one dub is because we're not, we're not going to be playing the chiefs. So we're not going to be playing the Ravens. They playing each other. I, so I would sure dare say point. those th- it's probably going to be a division game right out. Yeah. The I would know? say we're going to get the Colts out the gates week. You one. think so? Okay. I think so. Colts, Colts. Yeah. I think it's going to be Colts. Um, It's going to be interesting, man. That chiefs game is going to be one. We're going to mark. Oh yeah. Uh, the dolphins game is going to be one. We're going to mark. Obviously the Ravens game lions is another one. They just, didn't they just give the golf like great, a big man. fat. Yeah. Signing contract, he just he's signed the, a big old fat guy. So he's, he's their guy. He's the, he's the richest person in Michigan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which I mean, it's not really saying much. But. <laughs> how many how many fan bases have we offended today? I don't um, know. It's been quite a few. Offending Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite a few, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be good, man. It should be interesting. Think, so, yeah. So yeah. to your point, everybody, stay tuned. As soon as they release that, I think you and I are are kind of trying to stay in sync on that day because yeah. we want to we want to release and do do a video definitely by that afternoon or, or or if not first thing the next the next morning. Yeah, uh, we'll give our we'll give our predictions, man, on what we yeah. think the record is going to be, in, which which games are going to be wins, which games are going to be L's. Right. Uh, and it all depends on the time of year, like we just got got done talking about. Right. Later in the year, these cold weather games become a factor. We're obviously a, a warm weather city, right. plays a side of the dome. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so all, all of this stuff is a factor when you're talking about a schedule, man. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a fun episode. We'll break all of that down uh, whenever we get there, man. But um, to put a bow on this, Omar, um. Man, we talked about some great things that are absolute reasons why we know this team is Super Bowl bound. Yep. Like I say, you 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 spoiled mine a little bit earlier, but that's why we in sync, baby. Right. For that's sure. That's why we in sync, man. Uh, I I still throughout everything, man. The the Joe Mixons of the world, the Danell Hunters of the world, the uh, Stefan Diggs, like like any of them. None are as important to me as us retaining Bobby Slowick. No, oh, for sure. You're talking about bringing back a, st- a, a a quarterback who won Rookie of the Year honors. You know, the boy was in the MVP conversation. Until exactly. Hurt. Exactly. I mean, that's how good he was. And you're talking about bringing him back for another year under yeah. the same offense? Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, Come the, on. An, an offense that is now... I'd say five times more potent than it was before. Yes, more weapons. And yeah. we, we, we talked about it on our draft show, man, uh, talking about some of the unsexy picks and unsexy things that we've right. done by bringing in depth. Dude, right. we went into that. We went into the playoff game with no Tank Dale. No, yes. Uh, uh, Noah Brown was hurt. And, bro, for us to be sitting here itching like, oh, we don't have Noah Brown. Yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah. Now we got studs, bro. We right. just – We've we've brought in additional receivers, uh, even after the draft. I mean, we we got the guy from uh the Rams. From the Rams. Oh, um, what's what his, his name? name? Dang, I can't I can't think uh, of his name. Scrovenick, Scrov neck or whatever. Forget Something. His name. Yeah, I know yeah. he a dude that I, I used to have Cooper Cup on my fantasy team. Every time that he would uh, Skronic, Skronic, every time Skronic would catch the ball, like, oh, is, 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 is that Cup? Is that is that Cooper? Is that Cup? Ah, <laughs> it's the other white boy, you know. Like, I tell you what, he's he's an he's an interesting pickup because of very. like his ability to play so many positions. I mean, he's slot ride right receiver. He's a great on the block. He's you know yeah. tight end. He can you know he can just give you so many different looks that you know I yeah. I when. 
I, I think that is probably going to show up later in the season as one of the most underrated pickups of the offseason for the Texans because I because I think he can cause so much confusion. I agree. I agree. You know? So we'll see. I agree. And then we we got some um but we we did made an interesting move. We picked up a set of twins from uh, South Dakota State, the Jackrabbits, which is weird, right? They're what? they're they're wide receivers, but they're twins, and we signed them both. Uh, you know, t- yeah, twins usually uh, kind of have the same skill set, right? That, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And now uh, they put up similar numbers, same work ethic, everything like that. But that's you know, there's there's only so many roster spots, uh, especially for the same position. So that's that's very interesting to see two brothers going in vying for the same position in an already hefty uh, wide receiver room with the Texans. Yeah, uh, you know, man, that's. That's going to be guys, you know, I've said it earlier, man. There's going to be a lot of guys on the chopping block. A lot of guys going to hit the streets that, that are pretty good. And, you know, people like the Xavier Hutchinson, uh, John Mechie, um, Robert Woods is gone. But that's, might, but that's a testament. Well pack his bags. Yeah. That's a testament to the to the abundance of talent that, that's here right yeah. now, right? Yeah. Is that the weeding out process is going to end up discarding high quality players right really good guys so yeah. what we're going to be left with is a concentration of the high quality players right and i don't know the depth is going to be amazing this year the depth the depth man so yeah um it's great man it's great it's all good i am ready i'm primed for the bull run um and guys y'all 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 keep it locked here man i don't think it's too much going on around the horns today man so we're gonna save that for next man. time but not like I lot. say, guys, y'all um, hit the subscribe button. Help us get to a thousand subs before the season starts. You want to keep it locked, man. We're going to come at y'all heavy and often here um, before the season starts. So keep it locked. Hit the subscribe button, the like button, the notification button, all the damn buttons that you can. And uh, keep it locked right here, man. So it's a bull run podcast, baby. Oh, what's, out, your, what's your what's your hat say, bro? What is that? What is that logo? Yeah. This is Alp. It's Alpine. I mean, they're they're the shittiest team on the F1 grid right now, but Pierre Gasly's my guy. So ah, uh, so it's more F1 stuff. Yeah, it's F1 stuff. Yeah, I also got a Checo shirt on today. Totally un totally unrelated. Oh man, uh, me I mean, too. I don't totally, know if you can see mine. Yeah, what is that? I got you got the, Louis Vuitton. It's the, nah, it's uh L V. Oh, nah, it's a Tesla it's, hat. It's Tesla, yeah. Man, oh, the, you got a golf cart hat. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> This is my uh my my liberal nerd version of a MAGA hat, bro. It's like <laughs> it's like the, the exact opposite of a MAGA hat. Yeah, you just put this on so to visibly show people that you're an asshole. The anti MAGA hat, I love it. Good stuff. I don't subscribe hey, to either camp, man. But uh, it's, it's listen. One one more thing before we wrap this up, we'll and we'll talk about this in depth on another pot on another episode. But what's up? We talked about this last last week. JJ coming to to Houston. Yes, and we got a response back from the coach. So, so so to preface it, what did JJ say? J, JJ in his interview, they asked him. They were like, "What would it take for you to come back?" JJ was like, "Man, if if coach needs me, if he says that he absolutely, absolutely needs me, needs me yeah. uh, then he he knows to to call me." He knows, yeah. And what D'Amico say? And D'Amico said, "Hey, this is me calling right now." I'm calling you right now. I need you right now. They playing with our emotions, Smokey. I'm telling you, dude. They are playing with our emotions, I'm bro. I'm telling you. You can't you can't do this to a to a to a city, to a fan base that's no. clamoring for this to happen, no. bro. If no. if they are not serious, they 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 putting too way too much smoke on that fire. I'll tell you what, be I'm gonna make a prediction. Today's Monday, May 13th. I'm gonna say before the end of this week, there will be a cryptic. Uh, social media post by JJ Watt. Oh, he, in he some, loves in some way, shape, or form, he's gonna drop something that's that's so cryptic that's gonna make people go nuts. Yeah, and I'm I'm ready for it. Yeah, he loves the attention, man. So he'll he definitely does. do that. Um, I'm here for it, though, man. Sa- I'm same. here for it, though. I'm same. here for it. <laughs> All right, brother. As always, man, it's been fun with you, man. Love you yes, guys. Sir. Y'all hit that button. We'll see y'all next time. Love y'all. Peace. Peace.